lot higher. Do you want to stay on YouTube for this? Yeah. When I leave, I shouldn't bolt out that door. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Is, are you okay with going out that door? I'm fine. Yep. Right, just like, look at me and I'm like, yes. <laughs> let oh, me know if you're me. bolting quickly. If I jump on the cart and okay. surf it over, <laughs> that, that would be a sight to see. I'll push you out the door. That'd be a sight to see. versus Patricia McDaniel, 2246 FC. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, um, the case has been called. The attorneys have placed their appearances on the record. My understanding is that you've reached a verdict. Okay, I will take a look at the verdict form and then I'll ask the foreman to read it. Mr. Foreman, if you would read the verdict form. The case of the people of the state of Michigan versus Patricia McDaniel. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of first degree criminal sexual conduct. Plaintiff under 13, defendant 17 years of age. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Um, you may be excused at this time. I know sometimes juries have questions for the judge, and I'm done here. I'll be out. <laughs> Thank you. Please be seated. So we'll set the sentencing in this case for the same time, knowing that it's unlikely that it's going to go March 26th. At, 22nd, sorry. I'm sorry, what? 22nd. March 22nd. Number 32, People versus Patricia McDaniel, 2246F. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Amy Lazar. David I. Goldstein, on behalf of the defendant. Okay, Ms. McDaniel, can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Today's the date and time set for sentencing in this matter. Um, I'm going to ask a series of questions to the attorneys. Ms. McDaniel, you will have an opportunity. If you need to interrupt and say something, you may do so. If you, uh, if you don't, then I will give you an opportunity to address me before I impose sentence. So um, we are here today to uh, proceed to sentence after trial in this matter. Um, Mr. Goldstein, have you had a full and complete opportunity to go over um, everything in the pre-sentence report with your client? Yes, Your Honor. McDaniel, would you agree that you've had a chance to go over everything with Mr. Goldstein? Yes. Okay. Um, I've had a chance to go over the pre-sentence report myself. I will consider the guidelines prepared by MDOC as well as any analysis provided by the attorneys in this matter. Um, I did score it myself. And so um, all of that becomes input or advice as to the issue of the defendant's sentence. Uh, the information on the cover sheet is also incorrect. And we discussed this with probation. I thought they had corrected it, but I did not get a corrected copy. They indicate that she was found guilty by jury as to count one and count two is to be tried on 622, now, now June, sometime in June. In fact, Your Honor, there are two separate cases. There is not a count one and a count two uh, with regard to the, the, the other case. So what that should read is that she has another pending charge that is scheduled for trial. I believe it's June 26th, is that right? Correct, the trial date is June 26, 2023. Uh, she doesn't actually have a separate case number. She has two listed co-defendants, count one, was tried with co-defendant um, Richard Allen Bass. Right. Count two will be tried with co-defendant Robert Whitsett. So that is correct. In the well, it's count one, count two, but it's, it's actually a separate trial, Your Honor. It right. is a separate trial because we couldn't accommodate right. two juries. Right, okay. All right, I, I, I just made notes on that. That's fine. All right, so that count two, CSC, accurate under... Now, with regard to that, Your Honor, under agent's description of the offense, about half or more of the agent's description of the offense relates to the Robert Whitsett issues. And I, I think it's inappropriate for those to be in this pre-sentence report. That's a separate matter, uh, whether it's charged as a separate case or it's charged as a separate count. It is a separate defendant. Uh, it is, has nothing to do with, with Mr. Uh, Alan Bass uh, and the trial that we, we had. Uh, and I'm asking that all the references, and I've marked specific paragraphs, all the references to uh, Witset be, be taken out of this report. Okay. 
Um, Ms. Reiser, do you have a response as to that? It'd be appropriate. Yeah, there's three. Miss um, McDaniel was charged with two co defendants, Robert Whitsett and Richard Allen Bass. So, under the agent's description of offense, I don't. I think it would be inappropriate to remove that information. This was one investigation and three suspects, three defendants. Well, Your Honor, under normal circumstances, I would agree with Ms. Reiser. If all three co-defendants were charged with the same acts, they're not, as the court heard at the, at the trial. They're actually, although I'm not, again, I'm not questioning why Ms. Reiser or whoever charged it in the prosecutor's office charged it the way they did, but it's, it's very unusual. It should have probably been charged as a separate case. Because Mr. Whitsett and Mr. Alan Bass are not co-defendants because they did not participate uh, in the same acts. So that's th therefore, I think the references to Mr. Whitsett and this report are inappropriate. Okay. Well, I'll just fess right up that in doing the pre-sentence report, I'm aware of the situation and I actually didn't stuff about Mr. Whitsett because in fact, I know that that's pending. And so really in my preparation for today, I focused on only those matters in this report as it relates to Ms. McDaniel. And then in the other report as it relates to Mr. Alan Bass, because his report has the same amount. I assume it does, Your Honor. I'm, I'm, I'm aware of this, Mr. Goldstein. I don't necessarily disagree with that potentially premature to have included that narrative in here, but I don't, that does not impact my sentence of this defendant. In fact, I'm not going to strike it from this because in fact, Ms. Reiser technically is correct is that these are two co-defendants and had they all been tried at the same time, it would have been a long standing narrative, potentially including all three of them. So I'm not going to make those changes right now, but if it reassures you and well, the client um, in terms of preparing for Ms. McDaniel's sentence, I did review only those paragraphs that related to her, and in this case, Mr. Allen Bass, and in the other case, Mr. Allen Bass and her. So. Well, frankly, Your Honor, I wasn't concerned about today. I, I you know, I, I believe this court is perfectly capable of doing exactly as you said. What I am concerned about is that this report is going to follow her to the MDOC, and therefore, I wanted it to be as accurate as possible. Okay. Well, I mean, I appreciate your putting that on the record, but I'm not going to strike that at this point. It is part of the record, and so I'm going to just leave it as it is, okay? Is right on page 10, uh, under family, excuse me. Yes. The, excuse me, the fourth child down, uh, it's actually is the name of the child, and it's a son. It was, All right. I, and it's a son, not a daughter. That change, Ms. Reiser, I assume there's no objection there if that's accurate. Your Honor, can I say something too? I mean, yes, but is it to correct something? Yeah, two, it's two things I need to say. But is it about your son? Yeah, that. Okay, go ahead. It's U-N-D-R-A. It is, it is you. I thought you said A when we were at the jail. No, it's U N D R A. It's Andre. It's Andre. Okay. And then what can, can I talk? Okay. All right. So we've cor I changed daughter to son, but I've recorrected the spell. Okay. All right. And those are the corrections I have, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Reiser, anything else as to the narrative piece of this? No, Your Honor. I don't have any corrections there. All right. Let's talk about the guidelines. So, uh, any, Mr. Goldstein? Any or these are zero. Correct. Um, fence variables equal 40 is proposed by MDOC. Do you have any challenges to those? So you're right. All right, Ms. Reiser. Child abuse conviction, was that something? It was after. Yeah, it's a misdemeanor. Yeah, it was after. It was, it was after the date of the offense prior to the conviction in this case. I got, I got another, I got a question. Okay. Pre-sentence report and going through and scoring, and I didn't have any changes either. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find those here. These appropriate calculated and supported in the record. All right. 
Um, so, Ms. Reiser, I know there was some discussion. I'm not sure if there's a victim impact statement or if the victim is uh, observing. I'm asking you if maybe we need to make space for that. I don't, not at this time, Your The guardian was attempting to log on to Zoom for the victim to give a victim impact statement for some reason they can't get on to Zoom. So, I don't right. have anything at this point. Okay. Goldstein, is there any eligible? on behalf of your clients or any comments on what Well, Your Honor, at this point, it's sort of easy for me because uh, one, she has, she went to trial and has every right at this point to maintain her innocence. So I can't comment on the facts of the case. I really can't comment other than to say my client maintains that she did not commit these offenses. With regard to the recommendation of the sentence itself, it's easy because it's a mandatory minimum. And the a probation department did not recommend anything above the mandatory minimum, so I can't do anything other than to say to the court, you have to follow that. You have to follow the mandatory minimum. Right. Ms. McDaniel, this is your opportunity. If you wish for an imposed sentence, I am absolutely willing to listen. You say what? You are welcome to make any statement you want to me right now before I impose sentence. Yeah, I do want to make a statement. Don't. I said, I do want to make a statement. Go ahead. One, no, I did not do this. That's one. And for two, uh, I need uh, to ask my lawyer who suspended my visitation with Jaden. After all these months and years that I've seen that little boy, why, why did y'all suspend my visitation with him? Now, that's, that's what I need to know. And I need to get him reinstated. Why did y'all suspend my visitation with him? Are you asking me that question? Yeah, I'm asking. Because I, I actually have no idea what you're talking about. Well, I, I, you know, I know there was an order. I think that I believe was in front of Judge Vandenberg. I don't he know. A no contact order, Your Honor. Um, okay. With, um, right. Right. So why did you suspend it? There was a no contact order entered in this case. As part of this. As part of the criminal. How? How? Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I it was part of this. I I'm as I recall, was it a stipulated order? It was. So it, okay. So I signed that order. If there is reason to set that aside, then I would let your lawyer or Ms. Riser bring that to the court's attention. I don't think the I don't think the rest of the case is assigned to me, though. So I, that my order will stay in effect until it changes. But I'm I'm willing to look at that if that's and something I should look at. Okay. Anything else? Well, Your Honor, I think technically that order would end as of the time you impose sentence. So it would only be Judge Vandenberg's order at that point. Exactly. I'm, so not, she was, I'm not going to make a joke and say this is above my pay grade, but I mean, I do a ton of family law. Right. I don't really know kind of how that effect plays out here. So I'm, as far as I know, there's an order in place until it's vacated. And if the sentence terminates that order, then it would do that by operation of law. And then she may certainly move Judge Vandenberg to reinstate or whatever. I don't know. Or me. I mean, I don't know. The order would remain in effect. Um, because it's under 2240. Ms. Weiser, you can shut up. You're right. Oh, she's right. I forgot about that. You're okay. Another half the case. Okay. Well, you, you know, there are still, you're not going away to another, you know, country. So your lawyer or you can file something and I will certainly take a look at it, Ms. McDaniel. I don't know the answer today. But I'm happy to take a look at that, okay? Well, to get my uh, visitation back with my son, with Jaden, because I don't understand why they suspended it. They didn't have no reason to spend my visitation with Jaden. After these, as soon as I called my CPS case, I was still seeing visitations with him. And with, and, and with this uh, allegation, I was still seeing him. So why did all of a sudden they just stop it with him? It don't make sense. Okay. All right, anything else? Yep, and I need my appeal papers. 
Mr. I, I, I need my appeal. Would be given a, an appeal notice of appellate rights. Sure, sure, you'll get. Mr. Goldstein will get that to you for sure. It's part of the. It's part of the deal today. Once the sentence is done, I'll have him confirm that he's going to get that to you. And there's a bunch of information on it. So, all right. So, Ms. McDaniel, my job is to consider in sentencing four different things. Punishment, rehabilitation, protection of society, and deterrence. Um, you know, I've had a chance to go over in depth your pre-sentence report, your interview with probation, your criminal history, which was very little. But I also had, you know, the ability to oversee the trial, and I understand your position in this. But you know, we had a trial, and and twelve jurors disagreed with your version of these events, and so I have to say that part of my job is to proceed to both um, protect society and in this case, very much front of mind is protection of your daughter. Um, you know, my hope is that this is a rehabilitative thing for you and that you'll get programming to come out of this uh, a changed person. Um, you no doubt are aware of the punishment that is to come, and that will certainly deter you. And if others hear about this, perhaps it will deter them. But I have to listen to what I heard for those days of testimony and trial. I have to acknowledge what a jury of, of your peers has uh, decided, and I have to proceed. So as to count one, Criminal sexual conduct in the first degree with a person under 13, defendant 17 or older. The guideline sentencing recommendations are 42 to 70 months. It is the sentence of the court that you serve 25 years to 50 years with the Michigan Department of Correction with credit for 527 days served. Additional conditions you must register as required by the Michigan Sex Offender Registration Act and comply with all the requirements of that act. You must provide a completed copy of the Michigan Sex Offenders Registration Form to your field agent on your first in-person report following vacating your residence, any address change, address ver verification, or change in your status with an institution of higher education. At each address change or verification period, you must present your Michigan operator's license, chauffeur's license, or personal identification card to the field agent first in-person contact. Number two, you must not have verbal, written, electronic, or physical contact with Bill McDaniel, either directly or through another person, and you must not be within 500 feet of her residence, school, or place of employment. Number three, you must comply with DNA testing and pay a $60 fee as ordered by the court. Number four, you must pay a $68 state cost as ordered by the court. Number five, you must pay a crime victim assessment in the amount of $130 as ordered by the court. Number six, you must pay court costs of $1,611 as ordered by the court. And number seven, you must comply with lifetime electronic monitoring. Your Honor, I'm going to ask for two things. First of all, the 527 days was to the original sentencing date. The correct is 540 days credit. I believe we were originally set for sentencing on March 22nd. Yeah. So what does that mean? What does that mean? All right. So uh, 25 to 50 years with credit for 540 days served. Okay. The other thing, Your Honor, is I know you can't strike the state minimums, but I'm going to ask the court, given the length of sentence and so forth, that you strike the 16. Interesting, Mr. Goldstein. I kind of look at it as exactly the opposite. At over 25 years, she's going to be able to scrape together that $1,600. So I'm not going to strike that. Um, okay, um, Ms. McDaniel, so, so you said, will be what you will be provided an appellate rights form. You're entitled to file an application to leave to appeal the court's decisions. The form explains important rights regarding an appeal. The court would appoint a lawyer for your appeal if you're financially unable to afford one. Should you want a court-appointed attorney to represent you on appeal, you must make that request in writing within 42 days of today's date. Oh. Mr. Goldstein, will you confirm that you'll get a copy of that form to your client? It will either be this afternoon or the first thing tomorrow morning. Okay. So All right. Anything, any questions, Ms. McDaniel? Yeah. So what I got? Uh, so what, 25 years to life? No, 25 to 50. Oh, so I come home on parole? Ha. Yeah, I find 
I, 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 so do you have any other questions? I'm not sure what's funny, but I'm, I'm happy to answer questions because you're kind of laughing. So I'm saying I come home on parole though, or early release? I don't know. That's, that's a whole separate process, Ms. McDaniel. But I definitely got some okay. years though, right? Council, oh, anything oh, further? Oh, Toronto, I don't know to what extent you can uh, have any effect on this, but uh, obviously she has another trial coming up in June, and we'd prefer that she be kept here in the jail. No, because that ain't going to come. See. I don't know if uh, you can affect that in any way, but I don't. I don't know that I can affect that at all either, and I. I'm not sure that I. I'm not going to insert myself in MDOC's process if she needs to be ridded out. We'll obviously have that happen, but. Um, no, they need to prepare the Department of Corrections for anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Okay. Patrick. Thank you. Patrick. So, what the fuck? I'm not staying in this damn jail. 